What's up, guys? This is going to be a short little video of a do-it-yourself diff cover from uh, Blue Torch Fab. When you order it, it's going to come in just a box, nothing special here. There's no instructions, but there's really none needed. Once you get it out, it's pretty easy to figure out how it's going to go. These things are pretty beefy, so you don't have to worry about them being beat up by the time they get to you. Alright, now once I got everything out of the box here, I went ahead and just mocked up all the fitment on everything to make sure that, you know, I'm not retarded and I can figure it out. And then I uh, went ahead and started taking off all the mill scale for when I'm done that way. So when I'm trying to paint it, I'm not trying to get in all the cracks and, you know, prepping it for paint will be a lot easier if I go ahead and take care of this now. And it will also help with the welding process. There's a few different uh, methods here. I was using a little die grinder and that was taking too long, so I went ahead and grabbed the <clears throat> angle grinder with a flat disc on it. I think eventually I'm going to switch to a DA with like 80 grit just for like the flat surfaces. It's getting pretty smooth, so I don't have a, it's not all wavy. It's clean enough the ring here that actually mounts to the where all the bolt holes go. I will say that they don't include uh, longer bolts. So you will have to pick those up yourself at like a fast and all or something. Pretty cheap. Just the last, last little bit of getting this mill scale off and then uh, start tacking up everything and weld it. Now when you do weld this thing, you want to weld um, the shell, the outside completely before you weld it to the ring because if not it's gonna warp and that's what happened on my first one so lesson learned I guess all right so once I got it all set up here I'm just gonna tack it and then uh, check my fit up to make sure nothing shifted I'm just putting uh, four tacks on each side I had a little problem with uh, my gas not flowing right on the first one, so that's why I'm cutting it out and attacking it. Once I got it tacked on the outside, I just flip it over and I'm going to put some tacks on the inside to hopefully prevent it from warping. And, uh, once you get it all tacked up and you're ready to start welding, you really need to make sure that you weld maybe two passes, two little strips, and then let it cool. That was, uh, I think that what saved me the most because it got pretty hot on me a couple times, but... I'll just give it like 30, 45 minutes and then uh, weld a few more strips in it. And uh, when I was doing it, I was always welding opposite. So if I was welding on uh, the bottom right, the next pass would be on the top left and then let it cool and then it would be bottom left and then top right. And then once the outside's all welded in, you can go ahead and flip it over and completely weld out the inside now. Even uh, once the outside was welded, I still let it cool in between passes when I was welding the inside. As it was cooling here, I went ahead and used a uh, wire wheel, hit the inside of the diff cover to try to get out some of those little slag BBs and just, you know, trying to make it look nice, even though it's, no one's ever going to see the inside except for me, hopefully. And then uh, here I am about to put the, the fill plug in. I had an idea of using a... Uh, 
like some nozzle gel for your MIG gun to keep it from uh, the splatter sticking to the threads and the plug and it wasn't a good idea as you're about to see here. It's going to catch on fire a little bit but I was able to put it out fairly easy. And then uh, once the inside was completely cool, I let it cool for I think a couple hours. Went ahead and tacked it all around in six places and then the same thing, weld opposite ends from each other and let it cool in between passes. I was a little paranoid about it warping here, so I just went ahead and clamped it to the table to prevent it, hopefully. But when I took the clamps off at the end, it, I didn't even have to worry about it. Same thing, like earlier when uh, we welded up just the shell, weld the outside, and then once you're done with that, go ahead and flip it over and start welding the inside. There's tricks for this, like turn your welder up a little bit so the bead lays a little flatter. This is basically what it's going to look like when you're done. I ran out of wire on the inside, so you'll see those two little areas that I missed, but finish it the next day. Once you're at this point, if you have a sandblaster, you can go ahead and sandblast it, or if you're like me, you can go ahead and wire brush it and then lay some epoxy paint on it and then you're good to go.